Um, and uh, we're going to uh, bring in our hockey experts right now. Uh, we're going to switch gears uh, from the No Spots podcast uh, to a little bit of uh, Caps uh, talk and um, see if uh, uh, let's see NHL. But uh, yeah, Chan- or, um, if Gil and C4 want to jump on camera, we'll bring them in right now. And uh, we've got our Ovechkin graphic on and if people are watching live on Twitch, uh, we can, you know, raise the cup. If you're a subscriber and it makes Ovechkin raise the cup on screen, we've got hockey goals, which make um, Kuznetsov fly in with uh, the bird thing. So we've got lots of fun graphics going on live interaction uh, for our uh, NHL fans there, if they want to do that. And uh, I'm going to share it uh, to Facebook, to a bunch of groups um, as well in just a moment. But I'm going to quickly uh, introduce our co-hosts of uh, this segment. Um, and the first one is Gil. How are you doing tonight, Gil? Oh, not too bad. Pretty good. Um, <clears throat> uh, you might be able to see uh, my, my cat wants to be a, a surprise secret co-star because it's it's a little later than usual. But uh, uh, yeah, doing doing pretty well for a Monday. Well, I hope that you know on Switch, Pets are beloved, and they often appear on screens for all t- artists, for musicians. They have dogs, cats, and so uh, there's always commands for different ones. In fact, if we have commands. If you did Lily, uh, a dog will pop out of the screen, um, and our my cat and dog join me often. So it's only fitting. It's actually kind of surprising it's taken this long uh, for your cat to make it on screen. What's the what's your cat's name again? Uh, he's uh, his name is BJ, and uh, he's a tuxedo. Uh, let me see uh, see if we can get him a little guest shot here nice i love it come on (laughs) no now he's going to be a little shy that 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 sounds about right yeah cats do (laughs) whatever cats are going to want to do so yeah um okay so he's jumped down so maybe 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 not tonight but uh, he's 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 eyeing me so uh yeah i guess it's uh dinner time or something but uh yeah just uh doing pretty well tonight i anxious to uh talk about well i mean talk about the caps but I think uh, I just want to open things up by th- I, by saying uh, I think some are starting to make a little too much about the preseason, especially given the last game's result. Um, starting to see uh, some fans come out with the pitchforks and the torches and you know ready to build the underground bunkers and and hunker down for a what they think is going to be an awful season. And no, no, it, don't just just stop right now, please is what I have to say about that. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because you're only going to gain so much knowledge from this because we're trying to, different lines, different players. We're trying to see who's going to round out our roster, you know, who's going to play in Hershey. Uh, it's all about gaining information and, and stuff like that. And so um, I'm going to bring in our next guest here who actually got to go to a live game. So we'll, she'll be able to break that down as well. Good. C4, Cheryl Ann Forrester, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, and my cat is currently on top of the china cabinet over here to my left. Nice. So you can't see him, but he's surveying his kingdom. Nice. Deciding who he's going to pounce on next, and but awesome. um, I love that we all three have cats. Uh, mine has. And then the other pet is Marcus back here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you you all know him as Marcus Lemley Clarence on Facebook, but Marcus yes. Lemley is his actual name. So he's oh, Marcus Richard Clarence Lemley, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I have been duly corrected. Very enough, um, very enough. All right, let's but, talk about uh, the game you went to first since you um went to it. I'm I'm gonna oh, pull um i'm gonna pull up some of the stats real quickly unless gil did you pull them up this time or you want me to go through them i'm happy uh if you could uh because uh well uh, in in not so many words uh the nhl app has turned into an even hotter pile of garbage yes i agree that's one Um, way to put it yes so we're gonna go back trust me i'm being kind when i say that Yes, I agree. I'm going to try to pull it up on that hot garbage app. Oh, you're right. It has tur- <laughs> um, so, oh, wow. It doesn't even let me like stay on that. Oh, that's right. super fun. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's like I can't even get to the. Um, yeah. You can't get, you have to hit it? a scheduler in the upper corner and then you have to go back in time. It's, yeah. It's annoying. Anyway, it's I just ridiculous. figured it out. Um, so, Daniel Sprong, uh, uh, there was no scoring in the first period. Daniel Sprong scored. 
uh, for, unfortunately for the wrong team. I'm used to Daniel Sprung um, helping us. Um, so that made it one, nothing, uh, Nicholas Backstrom, uh, on a tip in, uh, for, on a great, uh, feed by Alexander Ovechkin. It's the opposite of a thing that we have seen many, many times. A great, scene yeah, it, was the flip. it was a, so, a flip. The cat on the dining room. Sorry to interrupt the cat yeah. on the dining room table back there is Landis Gog named after the orange one is nice. Landis Gog. Uh, I don't know if you can see the black one is Grinch. Nice. <laughs> They're on my dining room table. That's awesome. Jazz is going to the window. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> and I love cats. Uh, I'm, I'm all about it. Um, <laughs> then we got Tom Wilson, which I'm sure uh, make right, Anna happy yeah, somewhere. Um, okay. It scored uh, make it 2-1 uh, with uh, 12-26. And then in the third period, uh, Rasmus Sandin uh, scored for us. And then um john carlson scored and then they got a goal back to make it four to two uh and then oh no, no sorry that's was this a shootout what i don't know they, they just played. they did a shootout at the end but um yeah. it didn't really count because we had already won got it so I mean, none of the scouts, I guess, but you know, well, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but it's gotta be fun at least to, for you to, did you stay for the shootout to watch it or did you? Uh... Yeah, of course I did. Yes. Okay, cool. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, right. Nothing better than being in Capital One Arena for live hockey, in my opinion, it is like one of my favorite places in the world to be. So um did the crowd but, also yeah. stay, stay for, over, uh, for the shootout yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah, That's they good. actually yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Almost everybody. Yeah. Pretty much everybody stayed. Uh, we were actually up in um, the party suite, um, so like up in that two that corner, like around two o one, two o two, that corner where we attack twice. Yeah, attack twice. So we were up in that corner, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, we, you know, I was I'm not gonna lie, I was happy to see Sprong score. Um, he's just kind of been. <laughs> he's been bounced around I, I really think he got shafted when he was here um but yeah I, if marcus, I correctly... marcus disagrees with me but that's okay but i i also think uh didn't you wear a sprung jersey to my birthday game that i met you at i feel like yes wasn't he playing on the other team in that one as yes well? he was so, playing yeah. on yes that was the seattle game i did yeah. not wear my sprung jersey the other night i actually wore a backstrom <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, well, maybe that's why. But he I did. I did not wear. I did not wear strong the other night. Yeah, I'm still um, trying to find uh, tickets for my birthday game this year. They're playing the Rangers, which is always an interesting one. So, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna try to figure that out for sure. But yeah, um, yeah it was it was actually kind of cool to see Nikki score off of Ovechkin. That does not happen very often. It's usually the other way around, uh, like you said. Um, but all in all, I wasn't unhappy with the way they played actually nikki looked i thought backstrom looked a lot better than i expected him to um he looked like he was moving really well he looked like he was comfortable he looked like i don't think he's still i don't think he's still 100 percent yet but he's a lot closer than i expected him to be um right now so um i do think by probably mid-season he he'll probably be, you know, pretty much back to where he was if he continues to improve and his hip doesn't decide to go berserk. Because like I've said, hip, hip injuries are notoriously tricky. You just don't know. But um, I was really happy to see him on the ice. Every, I, I mean, the guys look great. Um, I was a little surprised we played the big guys, quote unquote, this early in the season. But um or this early in the preseason but it was good to see them out there and power play with the big guys still needs a little work they were moving a little more than they had been it was nice to see Ovi not sitting in his office waiting for the puck but um all in all I was pretty happy with that game I thoroughly enjoyed it the atmosphere was great it was just so good to be back in the arena yeah, um, I'm, make, I'm jealous. makes me I, wish I had season tickets again. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I, yeah, no, I, I, I feel <laughs> My pocketbook's like, mm, nope. 
Yep, I feel you 100%. I want to go to so many games and my pocketbook is the same way. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I do want to give a quick little scoring update in this game because it was just kind of amazing. They were in the red zone, the Giants, that is. They drive the whole field and they just got, I want to get the yardage correctly on this, an interception that went back 97 yards uh, for a touchdown. So instead of it becoming 14 to 10, which, you know, then would be anyone's game. Now it's 21 to three at the, uh, oh. in the final minute of the Ouch. third quarter. So Giants fans who are in that stadium must be beside themselves. They're thinking they're right on that doorstep. Yeah. Right. About to make it 14 to 10, about to make it a one possession game. And then boom, um, uh, they did just get a first down though, but I mean, they have to now be back at their own 40 yard line and start all oh over my again. Gosh. So. So Ooh. yeah, so um, that's painful. Yeah, definitely. So we're in the waning seconds here of the third quarter. I just wanted to put that scoring update out there. But Gil, what were some of your thoughts on uh, this first pre? Uh, not sorry, second preseason game. Um, I I thought they looked pretty good. I I definitely did not like how they kind of uh, collapsed towards the end uh, when they went down five on six when Detroit pulled their goalie. I uh, don't like that at all uh it's a seems to be a bad habit that carried over from last year so Mm. uh coach carberry's got some work to do as far as refining that out um but agreed other than that um yeah i I think they they look pretty good it was nice to see nice to see the uh the a lot of the top guys in there getting getting some time in um i thought uh uh, backstrom looked pretty good um i was pleasantly Mm -hmm. surprised at that um Oshi looks like uh, he's in uh, decent shape. Uh, Carlson looked pretty good. Um, yeah, just nice, nice yeah. to see all of those guys. Uh, the offense looked like it was it was clicking again. Uh, yeah, lots, Kuzi, lots more movement. Kuzi looked better. There were a couple of times when you could see where he took the puck down ice. And instead of taking the shot, which we, he would have done probably three or two or three, four years ago, he went wide like he used to last year under um, Bobby Lutz. So there's still some of those habits, if you will, things that they that were drilled into him that are going to be hard, that are still need to be worked out. Um, but I think all in all, it's it's going to be a much better system for the guys we have under Carberry. We just need to, like you said, work out some of those habits or those things that are left over from from Laviolette. Yeah, I, I I was happy to see what you know how we did in this game. The next game was a little bit disappointing, but it's also it's just kind of a weird lineup and so it's hard to gauge you know how much information we can gain from this game we're trying to get some of the people who don't get as much playing time or you know to try to evaluate talent right but it was pretty mm-hmm. lopsided um yeah. I, I can go i can go through the scoring real fast but basically they were down three nothing pretty early uh and then in the second period we came back and made it three one with a dylan strom goal and uh, then they made it four one uh, and then Matthew Phillips scored for us to make it four two in the third period. They got another goal, made it five to two. Um, Gil, what did what did you learn from this game? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, like you said, it, it's kind of hard to evaluate because it was uh, kind of a, you flip the script for this one. Uh, I think we had a lot closer to our A lineup in in uh, when we were back at home as opposed to this. And this one was more kind of the the B or C team. Um, uh, you had guys like uh, Hardy Haman Octel uh, get a ton of ice time uh, in this one. He's he's getting a long look. I did like the way uh, Matthew Phillips played. Uh, he he got a goal late, as you mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think he's worth a long look. In fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he survived the latest round of cuts. Uh, he's actually still with with the big club. Uh, I think when all said and done, he's actually going to wind up. He's probably going to wind up in Hershey to start the season, but, uh, yeah, some bright spots, but yeah, you got to take it with a grain of salt a little bit this one, because again, uh, I think Detroit had uh, a lot of their, their top guys out there, Dylan Larkin, to be sure, Moritz Sider. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think, uh, Billy Huso started the game in goal. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, 
not not easy to play against those guys. Uh, guys will give you, like that will give you fits all the time. So, um, I didn't think it, it was horrible. I mean, the score the score of course is going <laughs> to indicate otherwise. But uh, I you know some guys who who had a, a pretty good game and then others who were like okay well you're going to need you need some more time more seasoning so. Yeah. You know, that's what preseason is a chance to evaluate what, what you've got, uh, try some things. Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I refuse to panic because of a bad outcome in a preseason game. And, right. you know, I let's, let's just move on to the, the next pair with Columbus really? in, in the coming week and, and see how they do then before we raise the curtain. But, uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's what you're going to, what you saw is, is probably what you're going to get for the majority of this season yeah. yeah agreed yeah do you have any other I, thoughts um i didn't i actually didn't watch the third period of that game i fell asleep but um I, I, had much. A lo- I had a long week last week but um no i mean all in all i mean considering like gil said they're the young guys they're the guys that you know, may or may not be on the team, may or may not be on Hershey, you know, maybe moved elsewhere in the system. So again, evaluating, seeing what we have. Um, and that's again, exactly what preseason is for. I'm not panicking. I'm not freaking out, you know, but I am looking forward to seeing who gets where. Now, I, one thing I did want to mention about the first game, the game on the home game against Detroit, it was an awesome to see Miro on the ice with Ovechkin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. getting on the score sheet he actually had a goal that went right through the paint or a shot that went through the paint had it been like another inch or so on the angle it would have been in but I mean it was just really exciting to see him on the ice I think he's gonna be I, I think he's probably gonna end up in Hershey at least for the start of the season but he'll probably get a few games in with the big club this year I I th- I could be wrong what do I know but um in terms yeah. of like again like the second game again like Gil said take it with a grain of salt it's the young guys it's the guys that not many people have heard of yet getting their chance to see what they can do for so. sure um just want to talk about a couple of the upcoming games um we've got this is the last weekend of the uh, last week i'm sorry of the preseason uh, we've mm-hmm. got a game against Boston uh, at Boston on the third. Uh, by the way, I figured out how to switch it to Capitals mode on the app, which is a lot better. So you have to. How did you the, do that? Yeah, it's in the upper right hand corner. There's like a little button that pops down, and then you t- click the Capitals button, and then it turns the whole thing into a Capitals, which is way better. I don't okay. know. Mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like the upper uh, upper right hand corner. There's a little upper drop down. Right hand corner. Yeah, and then you yeah. click the the Capitals team, and then yeah, that's what I did. All right, and then it, it didn't turn red like this. No, it, well, mine's on dark mode, so maybe that's why. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, no, that that looks right though, at least now. So there you go. Yeah. Gil's got Gil's got it now. So um, so it's still not great, but it's still better than the other mode was. <laughs> so yeah, we're, we're moving in a positive direction. Um, the uh, so that one's at Boston on the third. And then two days later, uh, at Columbus on the fifth, and then the real sort of dress rehearsal Saturday uh, the seventh, like, also against Columbus Blue Jackets. Right. And then a week later uh, on the Friday, we'll be having to play Pittsburgh. At least it's at Friday home. the thirteenth. I know it doesn't feel good. Uh, and then no. on, on Monday the sixteenth against Calgary, I will fir- be at that game. You'll be at that game. So we'll probably I will be have at that game. Anna join us hopefully for that one. Um, and we'll have maybe even do a live watch along. Uh, we're going to do, we'll flip it back to the beginning of the podcast again. So uh, once the regular season starts, uh, we will, um, we'll be doing um, that for sure. So, um, but next week we'll, we'll break down all these um, preseason games uh gil any thoughts uh, about the boston and the the double dip with the blue jackets um boston's going to be a very interesting one um they they're kind of uh taking something of a step back uh this this season um a lot of the 
experts for once you can see me do the air quotes I love to do during a, <laughs> our regular podcast. Um, have them not so much finishing out of the playoffs, but uh, perhaps they're going to struggle a lot more than certainly they did last year when their uh, record-breaking President's Trophy winning season. Um, so that right. that's going to be that's going to be a nice little uh, litmus test for uh, whatever lineup Coach Carberry and company throw out there. I think um, because they're they're going to you know the Bruins are kind of in the same boat the caps are they got some spots to figure out who's going to play where and you know who's going to fill some big shoes so that i think uh, that if you're going to pay attention to any preseason game it ought to be that one and then you have the pair with the blue jackets and um um <laughs> you hate to call any team a dumpster fire but uh I, you hire a coach and then you fire him within what was it a month um Something because like that. yeah because uh he's a uh, um He's a, scum, he's a scumbag. Is really uh, he's, he is. he's a psychopath, is what he is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, and yeah. So <laughs> you got to have vetted him better because apparently yeah. this goes back to previous. Well, well, first of all, we all know this. We've talked about him before on this show, Gil. So it's like this is known. Not all of it. More stuff has come out. Yeah, but we're we're enough... just we're just fans. We're just fans <laughs> with our own, you know cobbled together podcasts and and without a big budget to or studio behind us and we know this like it's <laughs> common knowledge and right you know, we've seen this for ourselves how can uh, an organization not know this was what they were going to get not to you know spit on them because i don't really have any hate for columbus but mm-hmm. you know i actually kind of feel sorry for them because they've never really had any sustained success but how do you go out and you know employ a guy that you know this is probably sooner or later this is what you're going to get and uh but so many former players wishing for his demise too on their own like podcasts and things so you just you think at face value that alone would make you like go pause and go hmm maybe that's (laughs) not the guy that we should you know go with but you know like i don't know i'm not an expert but i i just like I don't know. It just seems so crazy to me. So I, I do feel bad for them. So I hear you. Um, I do want to give a couple of scoring updates uh, from tonight's earlier games. Uh, the Penguins got throttled by the Senators, uh, three nothing. Even though the Penguins put up forty shots on goal, um, and the Flyers beat the Bruins three one. The Canadians escaped um, against the Maple Leafs five four. Devils beat the Islanders six five. Blue Jackets beat the Blues five three in their game there. And uh, the two live games that are happening right now. Or we got the Oilers and the Kraken are tied at one uh, in the first intermission. And in the second intermission, the Flames and Jets are tied 4-4. So those are some interesting games happening around the world of the NHL. So, again, next week we will um, recap these last three preseason games. And then C4 will go to uh, the the open uh, – well, not the home opener, the uh, no. second game. Um, we were gonna be- go to the home opener but we couldn't find cheap tickets so you going to that one i i don't blame cheap, you cheap t- when cheap tickets and pittsburgh games are not mutually exclusive i mean the cheapest we could find was i don't know i think it was 150 dollars in the 400s it was crazy I mean, that makes a lot of sense, though, because Pittsburgh games in general are very expensive and then mm-hmm. home openers are very expensive and then you yeah. combine them. So, like, yeah, unlikely. Exactly. Um, so we're like, well, maybe we'll go to the Hershey opener and then we'll go to. The, is that what you're going to do? Are you, you going to see the we're going to Hershey? We're going to her. Yep. We're going to Hershey on the 14th and then we'll see. Nice. We'll, we'll take a lot of pictures and then maybe we'll show them on the podcast. And then next time that okay. you come back and take pictures of the game that you're going to be at for the, the hockey, maybe we'll do a little slideshow on your return and hopefully we'll get Anna for okay. the, the first um, show of the regular season and then have right. you back on the following week. Um, you know, giving some of your thoughts on that. Um, so uh, it'll be fun to do a watch along. So again, next week, it'll be at the end of the show again, 1030. And then the following week, it'll shift back to the nine o'clock spot. Uh, and then um, we're going to uh, switch football uh, back to the 10 o'clock spot. And if Hurt joins us, we'll do a, uh, a an earlier segment for him at 945 to 10 uh, doing that. And then we'll end the whole show uh, with our basketball talk when we talk about that. We'll also probably have to talk a little bit about the Orioles and the playoffs. I know 
Gil, are, are, Gil, are you watching uh, any of the baseball playoffs? Are you, you going to root for the Orioles as sort of a semi-home team? Oh, I, I definitely uh, am, am backing the Orioles 100%. That's the team I, I grew up with uh, baseball-wise. No no offense to the Nats. I, I, I still like the Nats, still have the uh, some love for them, but uh, they, they got their own issues to sort out. Uh, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I am beyond excited to see, um, uh, in, in, after so long, uh, uh, October baseball, uh, here in charm city, uh, one more time. And, uh, I, I had the pleasure of going to a game live recently, uh, when they played the, uh, the Rays, um, they lost, but, uh, they were, you know, they still put up a pretty good fight and, uh, they look pretty good. Um, I, I love, I love this lineup. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of young guys hungry to prove themselves, uh, where have we heard mm-hmm. that before. And, uh, I, I yeah. think they're going to go pretty far. And, and so, yes, definitely. I'm going to keep, uh, uh, two eyes on this thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was kind of bummed that Tim couldn't join us tonight. Um, I'm sure that something had come up, but I did want to talk to him. He was able to go to the clinching game uh, for, you know, uh, his beloved Orioles, you know, making winning the division, which I know was an exciting opportunity for him to be at. And Cal Ripken was at that game as well. And yeah. um, so I'm wishing them well. I don't know. Uh, I was you- following it on my phone while we were at the hockey game. And so when it was announced, we were like jumping up and down for that. And people are looking at us like, why are you jumping up and down? I suppose just clinched the alley. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. So do you uh, watch no. baseball at all? Or will you watch uh, any of the Orioles run, do you think? Um, I do watch baseball. Uh, I plan on watching some of it. Um, my friend Alan is hoping to get tickets to a game. And if I can, I plan to tag along. We'll see what's going on with that. So right, I do want to is your normal team the Nationals, second team the Orioles, or did no, you? No, all the way around. You like the I, Orioles more. I've than been the an Orioles fan. Yeah. Nice. No, well, I, actually, I actually, actually, I'm a Red Sox fan. Oh no. Um, <laughs> <coughs> my my grandpa oh. and I used to watch them in the summer. My mom grew up there. She grew up in near Bo- She grew up in Quincy, which is right outside of Boston. So when we go up in the summers, me and my grandpa would watch the Red Sox play. So. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I grew but, up with the um, Orioles. Living in Maryland, of course, I've got to be an or- Orioles fan. So <laughs> nice. All right. Well, you've come. Do you still sometimes root for the Red Sox, or have you now completely moved yeah. over? Yeah, you still. No, do. I okay. do root for them when they're not playing the O's. Right. It's but they so they many people who root for two teams trash. in that division, which I think is so strange. And my dad was on the podcast last week, and he was rooting for like the Giants, the Eagles, and the Commanders. I'm like, you can't do that. Like, I just like <laughs> I find that very frustrating. <laughs> Um, I do root for all the Baltimore well, teams it's and like, all the DC well, teams, but they don't play in the same divisions at least. So it's, I feel like it's a little bit Well, removed. you know, I was a Bruins, and Gil knows this, I was a Bruins fan before I was a Caps fan because of my dad was a Bruins yeah. fan. So I would watch the Bruins no, that's, games that's with my fair. dad. But do, do you still root for the Bruins though, or are you at least moved completely away from that? I am about 99% moved away from them. Yeah, okay. Well, that's at least I, more forgivable. You know, I will like if they made like last year. I was rooting for that. I wanted them to win the whole thing last year, but yeah. I mean, that's fair. I mean, if the Capitals are out of it, then you know right. it is what it is. So, all right. Well, with that, I think that I'm gonna uh, start wrapping up this podcast. But uh, C4, anything you want to give a shout out to before we let you go? No, I don't think so. It's just always a pleasure to be on here and let's go caps, man. It's going to be a fun season. Win, lose or draw. I think it's just going to be a fun season. I think these guys are going to be a lot of fun to watch. I think under Carberry, they're going to start having fun again. I think Laviolette just kind of just took the the air out of the room. Yeah. Yeah. And I think once they start having fun, they can relax. They can play hockey you know, Ovi will get better. They'll all get better. Kuzi will get better. Oshi will be better. You know, I think it's just going to be, I'm just looking forward to having the young guns in charge, so to speak. And um, we'll see, you know, but Ovi was, you know, and Ovi talking with Miro, you know, saying, Jesus, I'm old. I was drafted the year he was born. It's like, you know, <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff you want to see. You know, you, you want to see that stuff in the locker room carry over to the ice because you could see it last year. They were all you know, blah, you know, you saw those videos that they did in the locker room, but then by the end of some of these games, they were just like, I'm so done with this. So yeah. it'll be nice to see that carry through 
And the other um, thing we'll be we'll be following this hopefully. year, obviously, is Ovechkin and, and the goal scoring. Oh race, yeah, you know, so yep. that's something that I want to cover pretty much for the next two or three seasons. Hopefully, um, you know, in retrospect, uh, I didn't think about this going forward. You know, when we started this podcast, because I didn't know how long it would go. But now at this point, mm-hmm. you know, we're in season eight. I want it to be his last ten or twelve seasons in retrospect that we could go back through and be like, this was his, yeah. you know, the tail end of his whole career. You know, and. Um, um i'm betting what is he how many goals does he have to get so i'm gonna 73 73 73 to break it nice i'm pretty I'm sure thinking no, i think two he, seasons he could, I think it, probably more I, like there's a real good chance he's gonna do it next year next season yeah there's a real good chance if he has a 45 50 goal season this year he'll do it next season yeah i it just be interesting i wouldn't be surprised if he was closer to 30 this year just because yeah, well, well, we'll see how healthy he can be. I hope that it's 40, 50. Heck, I hope he gets 60, you know? Make it so you only have to that get 11, be... you know, 13 the next year. That would be... Right, uh, there you go. That'd be awesome. Um, but uh, it'll be fun to monitor. and We'll obviously give score, you know, updates on that race uh, throughout the season uh, as well. But C4, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week around 1030, and uh, we'll continue this conversation about preseason hockey. Sounds like a plan. All right. Have a good night and uh, we'll Thanks. see you next week. You too. All right. See y'all. All right, Gil. Night, we're we're going to uh, round up. I do want to give a couple of little shout outs before we do. Um, I'm trying to ban for about two or three minutes because we're actually going to raid out into a raid train. So people don't know, listening to the audio podcast, uh, we um, on Twitch, there's a thing called a raid train. And what a raid train is, is when somebody raids into another person and they raid into another person and it keeps on going. And it's kind of like um, we've done these before and Gil is. Uh, you know, been on some shows where I've rated into rate trains in the past where they could be about charities. It could be about themes. Um, and the, uh, Manchester, um, children's hospital, um, is doing a charitable fundraiser. And I actually designed the graphics for it, the two previous years. And I was one of the organizers for those years as well. Um, it's been a crazy busy year, you know, Zach starting kindergarten and I was just been so busy the last couple of months that I took a step back from the organizing side of it. Uh, but I did want to, um, rate into it with the people that are in chat. So people, if they are listening live, uh, stick with us on Twitch. Uh, we will end the audio podcast in just a second. Um, but I did want to, uh, give them a little bit of support there at almost the end of the rate train. They're at the, down to their last two people or will be at 11 o'clock. Um, and then, um, you know, so people uh, find it in their heart to give to a great organization. Um, there'll be more information about that on, on the raid train when we get into it. But, uh, I did want to just mention the, the, the raid and what we are going to be doing. I usually do that after I end the audio podcast, but I did want to include that, uh, that here, um, and uh, I hope that people, uh, if they are live on Twitch, stick with us for that. But Gil, um, I, when are you doing your uh, dress rehearsal podcast uh, for the uh, your your next um, uh, for the first for I think it's between the end of the season and or end of the preseason and before. So is it next weekend that's happening? You know us so well, Robbie. Yes. Uh, so uh, we we usually record uh, Sunday evenings. Um, uh, around five, five thirty ish. Uh, so yes, our very first, uh, show of the season, as it were, uh, will be something of a dress rehearsal this coming Sunday, the eighth. Um, we're going to kind of, uh, mash all the preseason games together. It's, it's kind of going to be a quick run through. We, we don't, don't expect everybody to follow them. So, you know, just kind of going to give it one big, quick evaluation and then uh, i got some as i mentioned this before i got some things to uh, get off my chest i'm going to go a slightly different direction this this season so i'm going to kind of explain that and i'm sure uh, the mermaid uh, anna is uh, has her own thoughts she wants to get out there uh, after a long off season so we're going to kind of reintroduce ourselves as it were because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, maybe newer fans eager that uh, going to want to hop aboard and, and see what we're all about, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, that's that's uh, it's going to be our opening uh, kind of quick salvo into the season. Then we're going to go full swing uh, the next week and, and beyond uh, to start uh, evaluating games at that point. So I've uh, 
I'm going to add some cool graphics uh, starting next week that will make um, your podcast pop up in a fun flourish oh, uh, whenever nice. we mention um, you guys. But right now you can still see in chat um, the uh, Blue Liner 98 uh, on Twitter or X or whatever they call it this week. Uh, also on bit.ly slash power play point podcast, all capital P's. If you do that, uh, you can actually get a link over to their uh, full show over on uh, their uh, Podbean, which is also blueliner77.podbean.com. And then the last one is the Power Play PPFB, with all capitals there. Again, live on the Twitch, it's probably easier to see there, but that's our uh, Facebook group. If you search for Power Play Point Podcast on Facebook, you'll find that group, and that's where you can chat hockey with Gil, C4, Anna, myself, and many other uh, knowledgeable Capitals fans. I hope that you check out any or if not all of those links uh, for more. I'm excited for your podcast uh, to be back. You're very lucky that the 49ers play at eight o'clock that night. So that way, <laughs> and I can uh, be uh, joining you and then uh, we could all root against Dallas together. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, the greatest of traditions. And uh, uh, so I appreciate you, Gil, as always uh, for being a, a part of this uh, show and being uh, my co-host for this last segment here. Um, any last things you want to shout out before we let you go? I appreciate you as always for having us on. And, uh, you know, I, I gotta say, uh, thank, thanks for, uh, uh, all those years ago, taking a chance on us, uh, taking us on and, uh, as, as your hockey content partner. Uh, so again, can't thank you enough for that. Uh, can't wait for, uh, you know, to team up with Anna again. And, uh, Look, the, the, the purpose, one of the biggest purposes of our of our podcast, the, the triple P, as I like to call it sometimes to save time, is to get Caps fans who, you know, may not be willing, may not have been willing in the past to get involved in the discussion and learn more about the game, how the game works, how the team works. And, you know, but to get your voice out there, because you know, it, it is important to be heard. And that's what we're all about is for the Caps fan to be heard. So we have an open door policy. You want to come on the show and call in and be a part of the recording. We have an open door policy. Just, you know, contact us through the Facebook page. I'll even put out my personal email right now. It's G-L-H-A-L-L-O-W-E-D at yahoo.com. Basically my initials, G-L-H and the word allowed at yahoo.com. Email me, just tell me you're a Caps fan, You're avail when you're available. We'll change our schedule if we have to, but we want to hear from you, the Caps fan, as to how you think they're doing, what they, direction they should go, where they can improve. You know, a, As long as you can provide an informed opinion and actually watch the games, that's what we're looking for, is the fan who learns more about the games as, as we go. You don't have to be an experienced fan, a seasoned fan. You can just be from day one for all we care. But get involved in the discussion is what we want. And you know, put yourself out there. That's what we're looking for. Yes. Well, thank you so much. I do want to read one quick little stat before we let people go. The Manchester Children's Hospital receives over 276,000 patient visits every year. Uh, for those children and their families, it can be a very difficult time. And with your help, you can make a difference. And I have put in the Twitch chat the link to donate. I will try to copy that over uh, and add it to the description of the show notes and also update the Facebook with all that information uh, as well. Um, but I, I did want to just put that out there. Um, it's a very good, um, charity, um, and, uh, we'll be visiting them shortly. And Gil, thank you so much, uh, for all of your time. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks did just score again. They're now up 24 to three with 526 left in this game in this fourth quarter. Uh, but, uh, Gil, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks as always, Robbie. See you soon. All right. And uh, with that, we're going to end our audio podcast and we're also going to end our Facebook podcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in, everybody over there. I really appreciate uh, everyone for uh, being a part of the conversation. Um, and um, uh, my dad did post on the Facebook one uh, that the uh, uh, first time caller from the Mid Atlantic, go Commanders, beat Chicago on Thursday and make Robbie very happy. And then uh, Greg Christian did put out that Jeffrey Meyer is now 39 years old. 
Uh, so those were some facts that were from a little bit earlier on in the show, but I just want to put that in there as well. So thank you everyone for tuning in on uh, Facebook. This has been episode uh, 315, uh, Commanders Fall to 2-2, two and two, DMV Sports Update, and Caps Preseason Live. Uh, hope that you guys have a great week. Uh, let's go Caps. Let's go Commanders on Thursday, a big game against the Bears. Hopefully a bounce back. we got three preseason games. Next week we'll be talking about all the NFL action um, and uh, also uh, the NHL preseason action as well. So I hope that you have a great week and we'll talk to you all soon. Uh, Recording stopped. All right. Thank you everyone for being a part of it with this. We're going to, um, uh, sorry, I'm going to put in the information about who we are rating um and uh, in case anybody gets uh, lost on the thing um so it's tess posner music uh the description is hi i'm tess a dark pop singer songwriter from california i look forward to connecting with you i write music for healing and empowerment she just started on twitch and a few times a week with original songs come say hi so again uh, she's a part of this raid train we're going to um if anyone wants to join um sub raid and raid calls are in chat uh, i'm going to start the raid over uh to her right now i'm just copying the information um so the raid has been created i want to go through and uh, while this is um uh uh able to count down real quickly um we had a hype train earlier one of our biggest hype trains ever on this channel uh two uh sub gifts and 1100 uh bits um uh, ginger dory gave a thousand bits uh tina french donated um 100 bits um uh, ginger dory res- resubbed uh andy primordial sounds also resubbed so thank you so much for all of you guys thank you tina for being a part of the whole show andy for being here champ for modding you know shout out to champ uh definitely go check him up out as well and uh yeah it's been a great show hopefully you guys can uh join us in this raid and i'm gonna grab the raid uh call myself and yeah uh hope that you guys all have a great week and thank you again for everyone for tuning in and being a part of this awesome show and uh, let's give some love to the children i'll talk to you guys next week